Matty Hapoya recently published a tutorial of his color grading workflow, which makes things a lot faster by using an adjustment layer on top of all of your clips. But there is the problem that this workflow doesn't really make color grading different cameras faster to match all of them, what usually takes a lot of time. Fortunately, there's a plugin that helps a lot with that and therefore makes Matty's workflow even better. So in this video, I show you the whole workflow together with a plugin and I also have three tips at the end that make matching your cameras even faster. So let's directly start with step number one. As you can see, I prepared a timeline here. The first two clips are from the A7S III. Then we have one DJI R2S clip here and one iPhone 12 Pro clip. And the first step is that you drag an adjustment layer on top of all of your clips. I use the adjustment layer from Motion VFX here, but you can use every adjustment layer you want in Final Cut. It doesn't matter at all. They all do exactly the same and most of them are free. So just Google adjustment layer Final Cut Pro if you need one and you will find plenty of options there. And on this adjustment layer, you simply do all the color grades that you would usually do to all of your clips to get to your final look. And I do that with my main camera here, the A7S III. So I apply a custom LUT. There I choose phantom LUTs here and I go for the natural one. I use phantom LUTs as my conversion LUTs as our premium LUTs that are paid because they give me this nice Arri Alexa cinema camera look. But you don't actually need this LUTs. There is a functionality in the plugin that I show you in a second that can do something very similar if not the same. So keep watching for that. So I do that step here at first because I shoot everything in lock and I need to bring this flat lock colors to a normal looking image what it is right now and of course if you don't shoot in lock then you would not do that then you can start where we are right now and continue with your final color grade so this is what I'm doing now I apply another LUT here let's use my taint LUT pack here that you will find in my shop that does a nice grade here I don't want to go too far with this LUT let's just dial it in at 0.75 yeah it makes it a little bit warmer I like that and then I would also apply my three-way color correction here because I think that the shadows are a bit too low. I would apply that before I apply my tange LUT. Yeah, make it a little bit brighter. I also want to give it a little bit more saturation. Not too much though. I think that looks pretty good. I especially want to have a bit more saturation in the highlights as well to bring out the sunset a bit more. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe a mid-tone slightly bit darker. I personally like dark color grades. So as you can see, that looks pretty good already here. Of course, you could do more tweaks. You could, for example, add a bit more contrast on a different clip, like not on this one. It's already contrasty enough, but you can really do whatever you want there to create your final look already or use different LUTs. But what you can notice already now is that the clips don't match. Like here, the iPhone clip looks completely different. The R2S clip looks different. And even the other clip from the Sony A7S III looks slightly different because we shot it like 10 minutes later or so where the sun was a bit low and therefore the light was more reddish, but we used the same light white balance there. So that also doesn't fit perfectly anymore. And that is where we come to step two, that we want to ensure that all those clips look around the same. Maddie also does that in his workflow, but he does that with the internal tools. Like for example, if you would say that this first clip here is a little bit dark or too dark, then you could use the internal tools here from Final Cut to bring up the exposure a little bit, make the shadows maybe a little bit brighter and so on probably adjust the saturation also a bit in case you want to bring that down. And now if all of your shots would be from the same camera with the same picture profile, then it's perfectly fine to do it like that and it's actually the fastest way then. But the problem now is that I also have the DJI R2S here and the iPhone and all of those clips look completely different. And this is where my little secret plugin or tool comes in. And that is Cinematch, which is also the sponsor of today's video. So let's apply that to the DJI R2S clip and see what it does. Now when we open that we see all those controls here which look a bit difficult at first but it's actually not. So here what I simply do is I select DJI R2S and D-Log and then I select Sony A7S3 S-Log3 as Gamma 3 Cine because that's the camera that I shot in and the picture profile and as you can see it suddenly looks good. It's not that it looks exactly the same as the other one now because it were shot at completely different locations and different days so obviously the colors look a bit different but you can instantly see 
that now it looks decent and that is what this plugin does. It com converts the colors from one camera to the colors of another camera. In that case, I convert the DJI Air 2S colors to the colors from my Sony a7S III. Doesn't work 100% perfect, but it's pretty close. And let's do the same on the iPhone. So I select Apple and iPhone 12 Pro Max, Dolby, and then I convert that also to my Sony a7S III in S-Log3 as Gambit 3 Cine. And as you can see, it also instantly looks a lot better. Also not perfect, but definitely usable. And from there, I can do some more tweaking, like when I compare it with the first shot, Definitely shadows and midtones. I would make them a little bit darker while I would make the sun a bit brighter. So I would first raise my exposure a little bit to make the sun a bit brighter. Then I go down here, lower my shadows a bit, not too much though. And midtones also a bit, little bit darker, probably highlights even more up, fine adjustments here. And now the colors in those shots already look pretty close. Could do some minor adjustments here, like I can also adjust the temperature, for example, like making it a slightly bit colder maybe and a little bit, there's a bit too much red inside. So I want to give it a little bit of a green there. And yeah, as you can tell, that already looks pretty close. It's not like 100% perfect, could still do it better, but for a YouTube video that would already do the job. So I leave it like that now. And then exactly the same here with my iPhone shot, I would also like drag the exposure a bit lower here actually. And then I would bring my shadows down. It might look a little bit different on the screen as I would usually color grade because the light is really shining directly into my eyes right now and that makes the monitor look pretty dark. I would usually not color grade in that setting. So it's likely not perfect right now, but for the sake of the tutorial, it should be fine. This shot here, it feels a bit colder than the others. So I also make that a bit darker. Here the temperature slider, also give it a bit more tint. And now when we look at it, now the thing here is really that this plugin allows me to use all of my cameras with exactly the same lock conversion LUT, the Phantom LUTs that I used before for my Sony a7S III footage. And this is huge because it makes matching all those cameras so much easier, even if it's shot on different days and with completely different camera settings and so on, because I at least have the same starting point, like starting in this S-Log3 color space. Then there's also another thing here that I want to show you if I apply Cinematch to my first Sony a7S III shot, which also looks slightly different as the other one. I can also choose Sony a7S III here and also Sony a7S III in the target camera here. And now you see it converts Sony a7S III to Sony a7S III, so basically everything stays the same. But when I do that, it allows me to make my adjustments here as well. So I can increase the exposure here a little bit I could bring the shadows a little bit down. Maybe I could make it a tiny bit less warm and then it also instantly matches a bit better with the next shot. So it's not just that you can match different cameras, but it also helps you to match shots from the same camera. Now you might think that for color grading only four clips that already felt quite long, but trust me, if I would color grade those clips without this plugin, it would take a lot longer. And also you usually have a bunch of clips from the same camera everywhere and that would allow you to copy all those color grades from Cinematch over directly. You can just copy with command C and then press option command V to copy Cinematch and paste it into another clip and you instantly get that. And that is where it really speeds things up. It's like at the end, if you're working on an actual timeline with lots of clips, you end up copying the Cinematch stuff a lot and therefore it gets really quick, especially on longer videos. Yeah, yeah, I know you might think now that it's just another sponsored video and of course he likes this plugin if he's sponsored and so on. Let me tell you something, I actually have to say sorry to Cinematch here because I am so late with this video. It's actually about three months now I think that I'm late, so sorry Cinematch for that. But it's actually good because that gave me a lot of time to work with this plugin and 
it is actually true that I used Cinemage in every video that I color graded this year. So I can definitely say that it's a great plugin and it has become a big part of my whole color grading process. I don't want to color grade without it anymore. And as promised in the beginning, I also have a few additional tips for you here, actually more than three. And the first one is that you can save money on LUTs if you want to convert your colors to like every cinema camera colors, especially by using the same plugins. So let me show you how to do so. So when I turn all of my color grades here off in the adjustment layer and I apply Cinematch here, then I can choose again my input camera, Sony A7S3, S Log 3, and then I choose Arri in the target camera. It automatically applies Alexa Log C. And here's a nice functionality of this plugin under step two camera adjustments where you find apply rec 709 transform and when I turn that on you see that it converts my S-Log3 image to a final rec 709 like standard color looking image and now when I apply that cinematch here instead of the conversion LUT and I turn my other, other grades on then you see it looks pretty much or if not exactly the same as if I would use my Phantom LUT. And my second tip can really speed up your color grading a lot and that is that you should convert color grades that you will oftentimes use in, in future videos to presets. And you can easily do that in Final Cut. For example, when I have my adjustment layer here, let's take that off. I can simply save effects preset and then I can type in a name here, for example, um, travel grade and I can choose the effects that I want to include in this preset and I can also choose a folder or a category here like my category is P Basel so I click save and now you see that is applied here in my folder and I can always use that in the future which is great. As you can see I have multiple presets here one color finale S log 3 if I apply that applies a color finale effect where I quickly convert it to one of those phantom LUTs that I use oftentimes and also applies a little bit more contrast what I usually do. I also have a preset here for the main angle of my studio. So if I go to the video from last week, you see that here is also color grade with color finale and there I did some tweaks to make the background more blue and make my skin a little bit more pop and so on. And I also have a Cinematch preset. If I apply that, you can see that I already have chosen the cameras that I usually use like A7S3 and A7S3 here, but it also allows me to quickly change the input camera and then it directly converts everything to the target camera. And those presets are especially huge for Cinematch because you have to always select your input and your target camera, otherwise that obviously takes up a lot of time. So just being able to quickly select these presets and have everything selected directly is such a huge time saver, I love that. And my third tip is when you use Cinematch and your camera is not available under the profiles, in that case, you can simply use a camera that is similar to the camera that you actually used. So let me show you that here. It's actually, the problem is right now with the Mavic 3. So if I would color grade Mavic 3 footage, then I would go to DJI here and I would choose X5S and D-Log because I found through my testings that the X5S D-Log seems to be a bit similar to the one from the Mavic 3. So I choose that then for color grading. So it's not perfect, of course, like I have to do a bit more tweaks to get it right, but it's still faster as if I would completely start from zero without Cinematch. And I also have a little bonus tip here for you, which is that if you want to match drone footage or action camera footage with footage from your normal camera, that you should blur it out a little bit, like not your main camera, but the drone footage, because it usually is a little bit too sharp. So when we have a look here at the Air 2S footage or also the iPhone footage, and if we compare it to my A7S 3 footage here, you can see that the A7S 3 footage looks a little bit softer, but it's also super detailed. I actually prefer that look because it is a bit more organic instead of having this digital sharpness in there everywhere. So on my drone footage, I would simply go to blur, Gaussian blur, and I would give it an amount of only 1.5. And as you can see here, just looks slightly bit less sharp, but it comes a bit closer 
to my A7S III. It is not perfect here, not claiming that it's a perfect match, so it's, it would definitely be better if it would have around the same sharpness straight out of camera, but it's unfortunately not possible. And I can also copy that blur here to my iPhone footage. Gaussian effect. Now the iPhone footage also definitely is still not perfect, but if I would give it more blur, it would get too blurry and also is not that nice anymore. That's why I keep it at 1.5 usually, but definitely looks better than before. That is important to remember because sometimes you have that situation where you really matched your cameras. All the colors look the same, contrast, exposure is all perfectly the same, but you still notice there is something in the image that does not look the same. You can still see that it's from different cameras and that could actually be sharpening so in that case try to make it a bit blurry if you use color finale you also have a bit better effect there where you can re reduce the sharpness just something that i wanted to leave here difference in sharpness can also make your shots match less but aside from all of those color grading tips here what's also super important to make your color grading process fast is to nail everything in camera and i recently made a video where i tell you how to do so and i also give you some more color grading tips there you will find that here in the corner so i hope to see you there and also if you enjoyed this video please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for upcoming videos